Here, the question, what makes you matter, what gives you your value as a human being, is your existence justifiable as anything more than a cluster of organic matter and its cells merely occupying space? Doubtless, the answers to these are numerous, and doubtless, most have them at their fingertips, ready to recite a song when asked. But not all do. Maybe you are among those who know not what to make of life, and I promise you, the world of Attack on Titan screams with us the question, where do we derive our worth as human beings? Have we any value at all? Yet, unlike the nihilistic media that revels in posing this cruel thought, yet leaves us be with no answers, this world provides something. It answers the question of value, I assure you, it does. What this answer is, this video's focus will be on uncovering. For buried in the mud and soil of Attack on Titan, there is worth, value, and meaning to life. Stick around and let's uncover exactly why. Erin's mother was a woman who valued the practical. Perhaps in her opinion there was little worth in seeking for danger when it was completely avoidable. Using such a view, it was unsafe, nay, unnecessary, to leave the walls, so long as safety was guaranteed within. Logic her driving vector. She was not alone in subscribing to this belief. Rightly so, apparently, considering how swiftly her husband's ex cobbled up the moment that safety departed. This woman, with countless other lives, was snatched up by the monsters they so feared to find themselves witnessing first-hand lubrication and peristalsis, the digestive processes of these creatures with no consciences, and that ate for no nutritional benefits. This was their fate, to vanish down the throats of these things regardless of social standing or worldview. Cruelly, this irony brings to the fore that in this world there is no meaning to your life beyond prolonging it. For titans are the great levelers, and life fades in a heartbeat. A heartbeat is all it takes for a soldier dedicated to the saving of lives to turn and flee for the salvation of his own. Harness decides, rather wisely, considering his fate later on at the hands of this same titan, to hightail it rather than face the reality that it is his job to save Eren's mother. This is his training, his meaning, and that duty therein lies his sense of self-worth. But that task he could not fulfill. The titans, diabolical creatures, have robbed another of his worth. But not him only. Jobs, livelihoods, and ranks seize all meaning when facing titanic mastication. In this world, the meaning is fickle. If you place your worth in your role in society, for society can crumble in the blink of an eye. Do we blame this man then? Can you blame Flock for turning away? For refusing to live in the lie that society is infallible, the truth, honesty, is what he calls for in confronting the main characters. Why should he be made to keep away his life, pursuing a role when clearly it has no meaning? He asks this, does he not? Is Shua Malo regretted rushing to his death, playing his role in society as the diligent soldier? So he calls for the choice, the decision. If there is no real worth, then even he, even Foda such as him, should be allowed to choose what they want to die for. Even then, luck, even should you choose, your life would still be a passing, fleeting shadow. Is it worth there to life just because you have decided to die for something of your own choosing? Beyond a titan's enzymes. Among those who find their worth in the fight against the crushing monstrosities that rob all of worth is an interesting man, Keith Service. Like Flock and Marlow, he realized, though too late, that no matter how he fought, regardless of what he did, he ultimately accomplished nothing, for such is the nature of this world. And so he resigned to play with and shout at the kiddies. It's all the same, is it not? At least his life is prolonged this way. Regardless of how he fought, of the lies they lost, they never obtained any sizable target. This is the same discovery Hannes made. <laughs> comically when he faced the big mama. Can any man fought him for legging it, and he fought Keith for turning his back to it? If so, you are the enemy of common sense. Keith was not that, so he turned and left. Erin takes over from him as commander of humanity's spear. An intense dedication for humanity hides his true motives. 
much like his sheer charisma hides meaninglessness under a glossy layer. Just as he kept his true intentions covered under the veil of humanity's progress, the men hid the emptiness of most of their actions under the curtain of intense hype. I speak of unprecedented levels of downright fire here. Don't believe it to be possible? Watch this. But not even this king of hype could outlast the truth. But considering his stature, no wonder they saw light. No wonder they believed and laid down their lives as pebbles by the monkey side. In this world, there is no eternal gloss, meaninglessness. Don't cover it. We emerge, and this hype devil will die without accomplishing his life's end. And so will they all. Levi Squad. Nifa, even this daddy's girl. In the world of Attack on Titan, her lives are not given worth by position or goals, but by fate's willingness to prolong it. Enter Yandere. Look at this girl, carelessly placing her value and sense of self worth into the protagonist, as anime girls be so prone to doing. Mikasa is the closest humanity has to Levi, so she can prolong her life regardless of what fate determines for those around her. From a young age, having learned from his sky, her breath, the very earth beneath her feet, Ara, that the earth is a severe case of black air force activity. This soldier chose to place all her value in Ara and those she cares about. But even that in this world is not enough. Season 4 watchers know what it is I mean. But besides that, let us study what transpires if those people you place your value in fade. When Ere seemingly dies, she loses all sense of self-preservation. When Armin seemingly dies, which he almost did, don't do this to me. She experiences extreme relapse into young Neremon and the prospect of being able to save him. Though they live, it is safe to assume that had they died, she would have lost the meaning to life. We could argue as to the specifics a bit more, but you understand the general argument I'm making here. And besides, barring the main trio with their relative plot armor, the other characters in the work who place their worth in someone else simply realize that it is futile. It does not absolve you of your privilege as an attack on Titan character. Your privilege to study first hand the gastronomical ecstasy of a jealous ex. Honest, you idiot. Look at his story. Deriving worth from those around her for so long and hiding herself to please them, but inside lay her little beating royal heart, empty. All the more so when the red titan left her. In attack on titan, you have no worth. Your role in society will give you nothing. Your investment in those you love will be as fleeting as believing that having a choice will ever change the fact that life is empty and you are my titan fodder. This is the cruel world. Episode 11 of Season 3 Part 2 is appropriately termed Bystander. Keith Sadis is a man with no contribution at all left to make to the world. A man who believed he was special, who sought meaning in his job as a soldier and tried desperately to find that permanent sense of self-worth. As all these our characters struggled to do, chasing their various addictions to keep themselves going, he failed of course, failing even in sabotaging Aaron, just to find some semblance of worth, to do something impactful and to break away from being a mere Bystander. Aaron himself, a bystander in his own life, feeling that he has no worth beyond being the fleshy Evangelion that affords humanity the chance to move on. By this episode in the series, Aaron is depressed, pondering his own self worth. What value has he as an individual, as a person, endlessly seeking freedom, chasing that brilliant illusion? But the world is bleak, and it does not matter how hard you press against it. Every you turn, people will be flailing and crying. But despite all this, Yes, the world is not right. Yes, it is an empty abyss from whence we can wrestle no value or worth to place within ourselves. But despite all this, underneath all that dirt and mud, there lies a beautiful message in Attack on Titan, more explicitly stated in this episode. You cannot find worth in this world, for it is cruel. You cannot call out into the abyss and expect a kind voice to shout back. The only thing you will hear is your own voice as it echoes back to you. The greeting you shout, the same is what you will receive. 
call Erin's mother says to Keith that her baby is special for no other reason but being born into this world. And though Keith fails to realize it or even accept it, so is he. Because despite all the grimness and bleakness, everyone's worth here exists by virtue of being born. Your presence in it and the words you shout into the darkness are the soul, the light that can populate it. Yes, we are but clusters of organic matter, but we occupy space where there was emptiness before. There is something now. That is the self-worth, the value this show proposes. The only form of self-worth Isayama has yet to destroy. This is why this ending track feels so warm and nostalgic to me. And this woman's smell feels the world with comfort and hope. Take